All right, so we're joining us again. This is uh, unit one, matter. This is part two, talking about measurement. So measurement, validity, observation, notation, and significant figures. Let's take a look at the first thing, the metric system. So the metric system was developed um, around the French Revolution in 1790-ish, around then. It was basically when they were overthrowing the French royalty and they wanted to make everything new. So they came up with this idea of this uh, base 10 system. They basically arranged the earth and the circumference of the world and they went from the, the equator to the North Pole and they separated it by so many and they got this length they came up with as a meter. And that's what we use for length in the metric system today. In our labs, we're not going to use meters so much. We're probably going to use centimeters and millimeters if measuring length of anything because, I mean, we're using glassware and stuff, not buckets. Uh, mass, uh, the metric system uses a kilogram. Uh, that's, remember, one kilogram is 1,000 grams of mass. Uh, one gram, right? If you want to think of something that you can imagine, if you hold a penny in your hand, right, that penny is about 2.1, 2.2 grams in mass. So that's like how much it is. So if you have like 50 pennies in your hand, you basically have 100 grams of material, okay? So this is something you can kind of visualize what a gram is, um, idea of mass. And remember, mass and weight are not the same thing. They're very different things. Um, they're related because mass is how much something is made up of something, you know? Uh, how many like atoms are in it all tight together you know density is also like a factor of mass so to speak but mass is its own thing now weight has mass with gravity on it so weight can change based on wherever that mass object is the mass don't change if on earth you weigh 120 pounds and you go to the moon you weigh 20 pounds you haven't lost any mass you have the same amount of mass you just have different amount of force pulling down on your body so weight and mass are two different things remember that um, volume. So volume is how much space something takes up. Uh, liter is the standard, right? Uh, one milliliter, of course, is what we're going to use milliliters a lot in class because we're going to use increments, right? So one liter material container is pretty big. Think of a two-liter bottle, cut it in half, that's one full liter, right? Um, oftentimes we'll see on our, our stuff where it'll give us, uh, you know, the liters and the pints and the fluid ounces. Like this Gatorade is 20 fluid ounces, 1.25 pints, and 591 milliliters. So this is manufactured for the United States. If you go to Europe and they're manufactured there, oftentimes they'll be rated by milliliters as a first unit. And these might be different sizes because they might be using 500 milliliters as a standard instead of 591 milliliters. So this is based on US standard, huh? Mm. So time, uh, of course, the uh, main unit for time is uh, the second. Now, according to the SI updated version of the metric system, which you should uh, see a video on uh, in your unit. Uh, if not, there's also something to read. That's about it. Uh, so second, of course, was based on the idea of you know, Babylonians and their, uh, their obsession with 12 and the base 60 system. Um, remember the whole like, you know, you know, find out your horoscope, you know, based on the 12 signs. That's because they realized that the moon, right, was about a month long. And in a cycle of one year from season to season, it was 12 moons. So 12 is a very important thing in that, that time period. That's why we see 12 a lot in a lot of different uh, old texts, scriptures, religions, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, but the time, the second, come from that. Now, we had to make it something that was, like, measurable. Not just like, oh, well, it's like one-tenth of a day or whatever. No, it's basically the length of the time uh, that radioactive decay is in an uh, isotope of cesium. I can't tell you which one or how long it takes, but it's one second. I think it's how long it takes is one second. So it's like a clock, right? But that's that's actually the metric unit of time, seconds. Now, we have multiples of seconds being minutes, then hours, then days, then years, then, you know, decades and centuries and millennia and eons you know so i mean yeah but the second itself very quick you know time and it's based on that moment in space time the second is only relative to the point in that space time because your second year might be different than someone's second up on the moon right if you are to relate them to each other exactly the same amount of time because time is part of space you can go more into that it's pretty interesting called space time 
um, temperature. So there was a whole bunch of competing different temperature models way back in the day. Uh, Lord Kelvin, right, which uh, they, he postulated that there must be a zero point where it's the most coldest anything can be. And they kind of, they got close to kind of figuring out where that is, right? So um, Kelvin, uh, zero Kelvin, and we call that absolute zero. Everything else is based on that particular measurement system. Um, so in the lab, we use Celsius, but it's in the same increments. They go up and down at the same rate. Whereas Fahrenheit, they aren't the same rate. Like there's like, they don't go up and down the same interval. So it's a little more painful to convert the actual unit to unit. Uh, Kelvin and Celsius are only different by 273 degrees. So you just basically subtract or add 273 to get the number. So just remember that zero degrees Celsius, water, water freezes, 100, it boils. Um, you know, Fahrenheit's 212 when it, when it boils and 32 degrees when it, when it freezes. And then Kelvin, uh, basically, it's just 273 more. Zero is absolute zero. Uh, 273 Kelvin, that's gonna be when water freezes. 373 Kelvin is when it's gonna boil. Fahrenheit, just to be, just to kind of give an idea, was oftentimes based on the body temperature. Our body temperature usually sits around 98.5, and if you don't have really, really good instrumentation, you could see where that might be the baseline of 100, and they went from there. Okay, so that was the idea behind Fahrenheit, if you're wondering why we have like 32 for freezing water, but then one, uh, you know, 212 for, you know, boiling. It's because it was based on body temperature. Um, okay, so there's in your in your PowerPoint, you know, you'll know, actually see these are all different ways how you can convert uh, temperatures. And when we get into more stuff about temperature later, we will have to be able to do these conversions. So always keep this in the back of your, your hat. Uh, we will be addressing these again later. But for now, this kind of tells you this is all you have to do to convert between different types of temperature. Validity of measurement. So uh, this is a big deal in science. We want to make sure that we know exactly you know exactly what's going on with our, our research our data how valid it is validity basically uh, before we share it with each other and also make sure we can replicate it with each other so um, precision versus accuracy this is a concept we're going to try to get through we have a, a little activity i'm going to have you guys do where you're going to get on zoom or other way it means one on three of us we have three teachers teaching this class so you might have a different way you're going to group up, but you're basically going to get into small groups, work together online, and you're going to, uh, you know, do this activity where you measure your Chromebooks or laptops, and you're going to figure out how and figure out how accurate um, and, and precise things are with your measurements. So precision, think of precision as being how often you can repeat the same measurement with the exact same number over and over and over again. Okay, precision is like, you know, like high precision machinery is able to produce the same exact bolt every time, you know? So it's like, the, there's likelihood of being off by a little bit or bigger or smaller or the threads off. Precision is very important in a lot of forms of industry, okay? Uh, also in medicine, precision is really important. Of course, in science is important, but that's what it is. It's how often that you can hit the same same spot. So uh, it's, again, it's just the statistical variability uh, how often, how close you get to that spot. So less precise would be all your points are further apart. More precise, all your stuff is more focused, more like hitting the bullseye. Accuracy is how often we hit the target. So if we're trying to just hit the target, like I'm trying to like, you know, boil, I'm trying to like, you know, hit something against the wall, right? And if I'm trying to hit that wall and I throw like a water balloon at it, I hit the wall every time, I'm accurate. But if I don't hit it in the same spot every time, I'm not precise. So accuracy is how on, on target we are. It's not a repeated exact points of interaction. So you can have something that is completely precise, but it's way off target. Like if this was your, your, uh, your dartboard and you're hitting over here in my terrarium trying to kill off some frogs, you're, you could have the same shot every time, but it would be precise, but not accurate at all. But over here, if you got your bullseye and you don't hit the center, you're hitting all over it, right? It would be accurate because you're hitting target, but you're not really precise, okay? So you, those are different things we've got to kind of learn to think of. So there's your target. There's your target boards, right? 
So here you've got um, this one right here where it's basically high, uh, high precision, high accuracy, low precision, low accuracy, uh, low precision, high accuracy right here, and then uh, high precision, low accuracy. So you can see for your own reference. If you want to visualize it like hitting targets, sometimes the best way. Um, of course, one of the way I want to look at it right here is uh, basically I've got the measurement of a bolt. It's the same picture, but I have two different rulers. One that's got um, you know all little dot notches in there, so I can see more when it comes to trying to figure out exactly you know how many decimal places I can go. And basically, this is like multiples of like you know two sixteenths or eight. 32nd or something like that. So basically that's how I get to the decimal. You can just divide it in your calculator. Down here, I can't really give you as much detail because the space between the, the, the inch notch and whatever comes after, there's no more notches there. So I don't know exactly how close I actually got in my measurement. So they're both accurate because I'm basically, I told you how long uh, uh, the bolt is, but the top one is way more precise than the one below, but they're both accurate, okay? And sometimes in lab, we have different scales that give you more decimal places. The more decimal places you have, the better your precision. They're both accurate because the scales work. Anubis, you need to behave yourself. Stop being a bully. Um, yeah. So the scientific method. Scientific method, this is something that's been drilled in your head since you were like in elementary school. Mm-hmm. I always have to get in trouble when I'm trying to do something. <sighs> so scientific method, extremely important in science. Uh, remember, you ask a question, you do your research, make a, make a hypothesis based on that research, conduct an experiment, test it out. Then you wanna like look at your, your data, you know, reconstruct your hypothesis if you have to, just to see, you know, well, you don't wanna make your hypothesis match your data you want. You wanna think your hypothesis first, but basically, you're seeing, okay, I got this, so maybe the reason why this happened is this. So you may have a completely different test to have to go through and do again. So that may happen over and over again, but basically the idea of it is you prove, is your hypothesis true or is it false? And if it's not true, then you need to do it again until you find out what is actually happening there. And then once you get a repeated result, then report it. That's what peer review is. So if you see people going online saying, well, you know, all this stuff is really good for, you know, COVID-19, and you know it's it's not peer reviewed then I, I wouldn't put much stock into it because if it's not easily repeatable then it may not actually exist that's the idea about science is that we, we got it down to so precise of an idea that we would be able to replicate it okay that's how you know your phone works because we know what microchips do and radio technology and microwave technology and all that stuff kind of comes together so you always have a phone that acts like a phone now, of course, it's limited on coverage and how far you are from towers, but in the end, your phone's going to always act like a phone because we get that. We understand how that works, okay? So repeated results, shareable, everybody's going to be able to do them again. That's what science is. There's not, the, it's not that because someone had an opinion. There's no opinion here. It's just data. Think of it like just emotionless facts that get basically done over and over and over again until we're pretty sure that is what it is. Now, does it mean that we might not get the whole picture? Certainly. Think of it like you got a map to uh, the state of Texas, right? If your map is, you know, not so big, you only can put so many points on it. You only know so much about it. There might be a whole bunch you don't got on there because you haven't yet got the precision to understand what's really deep in that map. So if you have a map the size of like a football field, yeah, you're gonna have a lot more stuff in there. Higher precision, you're gonna have all this material and you know what's going on, you're gonna understand it better. So the nice thing about science is that it helps to get us to that better, uh, higher precision idea of how things work. I mean, when I was a kid, I thought the universe was like, you know, 15, 16 billion years old. We've now figured, we basically have adjusted that measurement to 13.8, which means that we're getting better at making measurements between solar systems and galaxies and figuring out the drift. And, and you know, we're getting better at it, right? Maybe one day we might get it narrowed down to like 13.5 billion. Maybe we might have a better idea, but we, all we know is that it's still lots of billions of years, but we're just getting better at getting uh, the data to make it more precise. So observation tactics, tactics where you measure something or if you sense it as part of your observational skill. Measurements, of course, involve like things like 
mass, volume, distance, length, speed, time, all that stuff. Uh, you're using a stopwatch, you're using rulers, you're using a scale. Those are all measured observational things. Like I can tell you that this remote for my Apple TV, right? It is, I can tell you the length of it, the width of it, the area of it that it contains, its mass, right? Um, but what I can't tell you is uh, I can't measure its color, right? Of course, there is a way to measure the exact color using light frequency. But I'm saying if I just said it was red, right, that's an observation I made with my eyeball. Light bouncing off of it and reflecting to my eye. Um, texture, you know, it's got this bumpy thing on the back, right? Uh, it's not malleable. It doesn't make any noise. It doesn't really smell like anything unless you, like, drop a cheeseburger on it or something. Um, but that's, these are observations that we can make. So in science, we use all that. We use measurements and we use our, our sensual observations. You may say something is brittle because you hold it in your fingers and it crushes into a powder. You might say something is hot because you touched it, it was, you felt like a, maybe you didn't measure temperature, but you just knew it was hot. And you can actually put it with a thermometer, you can find out what temperature, but it might just be that the, that the, uh, the test tube got hot. That's all your measurement was. So those are different things that we use for observational tactics. All right, and that's it for this part of Unit 1.